Welcome back. High profile accounts on social media uh, and small businesses are increasingly becoming the targets of online hackers. Whanganui Mayor Hamish McDool was recently targeted and lost both his private and professional Facebook account to hackers. And he didn't just lose access to his profiles, questionable, questionable content was also posted on his behalf to thousands of followers. Well, Hamish McDool jo joins us now from Whanganui. OK, Hamish, how did these hackers get control of your account? Well, it happened one Sunday night. I was just messaging a friend uh, and went to, to make a cup of tea and, and then got back to my phone. It had only been, what, three or four minutes. And it said, log in. And I, so I logged in uh, with my password and, uh, and the phone number. And then it said uh, that there was a slight typo in the password. And I thought that was a bit odd, but I just entered the password again. Uh, and then uh, it, it didn't log in. Uh, and so I went to change password and the uh, you could see, albeit with stars, you could see the um, uh, email address that uh, a, new, a new password reset would be sent to. And it wasn't anything I'd ever owned. Yeah. Uh, and at that point, I tried again and again and again, uh, different things, and then I just you know, gave up and... Uh, um, and it wasn't for um, some days until the real, uh, um, how should I say, consequences emerged. Well, what did the hackers do with your page? You've said that things got immensely crazy. They did. So the, my personal profile was closed down after about three days. Um, uh, so it, it essentially blocked by Facebook. And a lot of my friends got messages saying that they'd been blocked. Um, and I didn't think anything more of it because I hadn't used uh, my professional page, which was Hamish McDowell, Mayor of Whanganui, for some weeks. And and then suddenly, about oh, two weeks ago, all sorts of videos got started getting posted. Um, people gaming, um, uh, there were some advertisements, and there was some, how should I say, uh, it, footage of equine breeding, <laughs> which was posted. <laughs> And it got very crazy. Um, a lot of people were messaging me saying, do you know you've been hacked? And, and of course, by this stage, I had no access through because my personal profile uh, was essentially dead. And it took you 72 hours after you did realise to actually get it back. Well, I'd been kind of vaguely trying uh, uh, before that just to see see how I could rev revive my personal um, profile because there's a lot of memories there. It's my personal page, not my, my public-facing pa page, a lot of photographs. But finally, uh, with a little uh, um, teamwork, we started trying to contact Facebook. We started going through the, uh, the suggestions on the Facebook uh, FAQs. Uh, but it wasn't until intervention from um, a, a couple of people who said, look, we actually know somebody who works for Facebook, uh, email them the, the issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, suddenly uh, my personal profile was back. I could change um, uh, the settings uh, for my public page, um, ad administrators who had been all kicked off. Mm. Um, and suddenly I got it all back and um, that was a blessed relief. Lesson learned. Thank you so much for joining us, Hamish McDowell, Mayor of Whanganui. You're welcome. Well, joining me in the studio is tech commentator Paul Breslin. Paul, it seems like this is happening a lot, uh, both high-profile people and small businesses being hacked. What is going on? I think it's a, it's a whole new vector for the rat bags to try and get hold of our information. So as more of us move into social media, as we, we all become comfortable with it, it's a nice way of them getting to make contact with you in an environment of trust. So rather than getting an email or a letter or any of the old-fashioned ways of doing it, they just make contact through Facebook or or Twitter, and once they've got access to your information, then they try and take over your account and then use it for whatever purpose they've got coming. And what are they trying to use it for generally? Well, typically they use it uh, to spam all your friends and colleagues and everybody that you're, t you're connected to. Uh, they, uh, as we've seen in this case, you can, you can get advertising played on your account uh, to everyone you, you know. But sometimes they're after your personal details, so they can then try and act fraudulently, try and get of your bank account details, your credit card details, or uh, I've seen cases of people uh, making contact with friends through somebody's Facebook account, trying to get money off them as well. Mm. And so that's why you've really got to be very careful. And so what can people do <coughs> today to make themselves more secure on these online platforms? Yeah, well, the, uh, the first thing you've got to do is switch on what they call two-factor authentication, which means before anybody 
changes anything on your account, uh, it will send a message to your cell phone to say, hey, this is, this is going on. Are you sure you want to change your password or mm -hmm. your address or whatever it might be? Uh, there'll be different ways of talking about it. Normally, it's two-factor or multi-factor authentication. So always turn that on, uh, and that helps give you that extra layer of protection. And don't click on the link that your friend sends you. <laughs> don't click on the stuff that people send you. No, that's right. Although they're very cunning, aren't they? Some of these things arrive and you think, gosh, that looks like something I should care about. Yes. Uh, it's a delayed parcel. Click here for more information, that kind of thing. And what happens if you do click on that link and you get hacked and you lose control of your Facebook? Well, then you've got to contact Facebook, which is very difficult to do. Uh, Facebook or Twitter or whoever it is, Instagram, mm. they all have a process to follow. So just Google, uh, I've been hacked, what do I do on that account and it'll guide you through. There's a process. It takes time though and that's the problem. The best thing to do is try and contact everybody through a different mechanism and warn them that this has happened so nobody gets ripped off. And uh, just finally, uh, the password... Password managers. App? Password managers. Password managers. Yeah. You should have a password manager because it will remember all your passwords for you. You can make them as complicated as you like and then you log on to the app and it logs on to these services for you and it means you've got yet another Another layer of protection between you and people trying to steal your identity. Well, that sounds like a good thing. Thank a very you. good thing. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Paul Breslin. Thank you.